Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTT 104 Gunsmithing Tools Lab, week four, final project, which is a detailed strip of the Mossberg 590 shockwave. We will begin with clearing our area, clearing the firearm, and then doing a field strip. Then we'll take down every assembly that's uh, part of the firearm down to its lowest component level, and then do a reassembly. So let's go ahead and begin. Before we can start doing anything with our particular firearm, we need to ensure that our work area is completely free of any ammunition. We've already done that. There's no ammunition within reach. There's no ammunition in the, in the work area, on the desk, or anything like that. The first thing we need to do before working with any firearm is ensure that it's clear. So what we're going to do, we're going to place this weapon on safe, which it already is. If the safety is forward, it's on fire. So we're going to push the safety back to the rear. We're going to depress this lever here, open up the action, inspect the chamber, both visually and physically. And close the action, check the magazine. This weapon is now completely clear of ammunition and ready for disassembly. This house is clear. Before we begin with that, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to use. I have a small set of pliers here. Uh, this little tool could be replaced with a screwdriver. Um, I just found that for removing the little plate in the back, the buttstock, this, this happens to fit good. Use a quarter inch uh, Allen head. We'll use a couple punches uh, out of this punch set and maybe the little hammer there. And a few of the screwdrivers in this uh, Real Avid uh, Smart Drive 90 set. So we'll begin with pulling the action back halfway and we will drive out these pins here. This pin right here can be pressed out. And we'll place these into our magnetic tray here. This will allow us to remove the trigger assembly. And we have the cartridge stop. cartridge extractor and we will slide out the bolt slide we will undo the front nut here it will allow us to remove the barrel slide out the bolt Now we can take off the forend. We can lift up the lifter, take out the lifter. And at this point, our firearm has been completely field stripped. The next part that we're going to disassemble is going to be the rest of the receiver, okay? There's several parts that need to come off of this. We have the ejector, which can be taken off with a flathead inside of here. We have the safety, which has a cam over screw that we have to be really careful of taking apart. We have the uh, grip right here. Um, we'll take this off as well as this, and the magazine tube, which will have the spring and the follower. Okay, to begin, we'll remove the magazine tube, which sometimes can be done by hand. Okay. If it can't, um, you know, I would be careful not to grab onto it with any kind of pliers unless you wrapped it in a rag. Um, you wouldn't want to damage this tube. 
So there we have the magazine tube. Uh, in the end here is a little piece of plastic that could be spun out. Let's see if I can get that out as well. Uh, we'll come back to that. We have the spring and the follower. Uh, next we'll take out the ejector. A nice tight fit. And take the ejector screw and put it in our little magnetic tray here. We're gonna lift out the ejector. Go ahead and put the ejector in here as well. Okay. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the safety. This one makes me a little bit nervous. The design of this particular screw is meant to cam over instead of being removable. Now there's a few parts. You heard that little drop just a second ago. Bottom part dropped into my hand. Okay. Next inside of here, we have screw, the safety, there's a little thin sheet of metal right on the bottom of there, which we're going to leave it on there. Then you have a tiny little BB. And there's a spring inside of here as well. little spring all right that's that Ew. my handy dandy little tool here we're gonna fit this right inside of here all right next we're going to remove this little plate right here slide out. Okay, a little plastic plate. Hopefully I'm staying in frame here all right. And then we're going to undo this here. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Mossberg doesn't put out technical specs on tightening of a lot of their different screws on this firearm. Um, I searched online for a long time. I even contacted Mossberg uh, and, you know, I came up with a bunch of different answers, but basically it's tight plus a quarter turn. So, all right. So now we have a completely stripped receiver, no parts on the whole receiver. Um, we can also, just to make sure that we're 100% complete here. One step bigger there. Now, this receiver is completely empty. There's no parts in it anywhere. There's nothing that could be removed from it. Uh, that is 100%. So let's see if we can figure out how to get this tube piece off of here. So we're just working that piece of metal out of there. Slowly. So that is just pressure fit inside of the end there. Um, I have another shotgun, I think it's a Remington where it pushes in and turns into place, but now that tube is completely empty. Let's see, there's that metal piece I was talking about. So, 
and just to be thorough, there's the washers off of that. Okay, so now we have completely disassembled the receiver down to its lowest component. The next part that we're going to work on is going to be, might as well tackle it, the trigger assembly. This is probably the part I'm the most nervous about just because there's so many individual moving pieces and springs and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we have a little, little hammer here, some punches, and this block is for removing the pins. So uh, we're gonna start with this back pin here. Um, I think this is the only pin that comes out from this side. We might, that might prove wrong as we're going through here, but um, as I take this apart, I'll put on the screen what each piece of the assembly is. There's a spring inside of here that will shoot out this backside if you're not careful. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just put my finger over the top here and then push this pin out. Um, if we can push it out, let me try. Uh, and again, it's kind of a awkward here, but we're gonna go ahead and hold our finger over the top here. Let's grab a little pair of pliers here to pull this pin out. Yeah, that pin has a lot, of, or that spring has a lot of pressure. That's a strong spring. So let's make sure I get good video of this. So pin in the back, taking out the spring. And you have this little plunger here, goes in the end of the spring. And you have this little bar here goes in with this towards the bottom. All right, I think that's that. Let's go ahead and raise up the hammer here, which we've taken out the hammer spring now. So we've raised up the hammer. The next thing we wanna do is remove this pin here. It should. hammer to come out okay all right let's just take a quick look here Make sure we're paying attention that's still under tension that's still under tension so there's two springs left in here let's go ahead and I think if I pull this spring, or this one here, we might need a slightly smaller punch. Let's see if this one's any smaller. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this pin. Which looks like the pins are different size, so we need to make sure we pay attention to that. Okay. That allowed our hammer to come up. Uh, let's see, so the slide goes towards the rear, the slide on the top here. We have this is coming up. If the trigger is facing this way, this is coming up from the back side. Okay. There's a spring right behind the trigger here. like two two pins left one for here one for there let's go ahead and push this out try to keep any springs from flying anywhere okay Thank you, Mossberg. Looks like another pin that is different than the rest of them. Okay. We have the spring. And this bar with this 
spring on here. Let's pay close attention to how that goes on there. This always confuses me when I'm trying to put things back together. So, just like that. Okay. And we have one more pin here. What did I just hear? Oh, I think we had our first casualty. I heard a spring. Oh, we were lucky. We found it. Little itty bitty spring. Popped off of that front pin there, uh, right here. So that front pin had that little itty bitty spring and this little catch here. And that completes the disassembly of the trigger assembly. Um, hopefully we have as good a luck putting it back together as we did taking it apart. In order to keep this all together, I'm going to go ahead and put all of the trigger assembly parts into this little bag here. Alright, so it is the completely disassembled, no other pieces on here, trigger assembly. I think the next thing we'll work on is the bolt. Alright, next we have the bolt assembly. Uh, we're going to use this pin knockout tool and we're going to use a hammer and we're going to use this little pin tool so find a spot where we can set that down on there into the orientation. All right, let's see here. The next pin we're gonna take out is this one here. Just a little tiny one. We're gonna go from the bottom here. spring and our washer and all we have left is our extractors which are held on with some pins right here there's some little springs that we want to make sure we don't lose there uh, let's see I think this one came in from the top Nice thing about using these punches is they kind of take the place of the pin. So we have one pin there until we can pull it out. And that's one extractor. And spring. And we'll do the other side. This side is longer than the other side, so we need to make note of that. Not quite sure why it's long. Oh, because of the slide. Okay, so 
slide that's not on this side and is on this side, the shorter pin goes on this, the one with the slide, where the longer pin goes on the one without a slide. All right. And pull that out. Second extractor, take it the same. Almost, looks like the only difference is right there, there's a little dimple where the, sp where the pins go. So this went with the long one. And this one right here went with the short one. That spring and that spring. And that is the complete, complete disassembly of the entire bolt, every pin. Go ahead and grab another one of our little baggies here. we have that that is the complete of the bolt next we'll do the four four end all right so here on the four end all we really have well, since we're going all the way we'll take off the strap too we're gonna need to remove this nut um, I have a Mossberg choke wrench that'll work good for this, so just put that down inside of there and see if we can't get enough purchase on it. That should free it up to slide backwards. There we go. Let's go ahead and Take this apart. Nothing else in there. And let's see, is that removable? Looks like it might be. Oh no, it's. Looks like it might not be. I have to take this one out to the anvil to to come out all the way I'll be right back we're gonna drop this pin out through here on an anvil with a larger hammer I'm starting to think that maybe this pin is not supposed to come out so we're gonna leave it in there uh, so the only other spot I could see bothers me I can't get that apart but not for lack of trying. So, we're gonna call that done with the forend, which means there is nothing else that can come apart. Oh, I lied. Look at this, found a couple more pieces. So, take this. There we go. Off the cap. And we have the barrel which we will take, take the bead off the front here. All right, at that point, at this point, I believe this Mossberg 590 shockwave to be as broken down as humanly possible. So let's see what we got here.
we're looking at approximately 70 pieces that make up the Mossberg 590, oh, 71. That make up the Mossberg 590 shockwave. Let's go ahead and put it back together, hopefully. I'm going to start with some of the easiest stuff. I'm going to put speed back in here. Okay, we'll begin with reassembly here. Well, I guess we're not beginning, we're continuing with reassembly of the shockwave. We're going to do the fore end. All right, that completes the assembly of the fore end. Next, we'll begin reassembling the action here. It's interesting, I wonder if it truly matters Tube looks nearly identical on both sides and I didn't mark it but that's okay I can see where this slid out this cap here so we're going to I'm started with our hands so that we don't cross thread anything. It's gonna be hard to film this part. Okay, two ugga duggas tight. All right, now for the safety. The detents go down towards the BB or whatever, so otherwise this is universal, so you just want to make sure you put that on the right way. Put our screw through there. This is one of those times where you could have lots of hands, but trying to get this in the right place. Set the BB. It's down in like that. I need to grab the right bit again. I 
one, Ugga Dugga on that one. That's complete now. So we'll start with the extractors since that was the last thing we worked with before. Next we're going to go in with the firing pin here. here That was more of a pain in the butt than it should have been, but it's in there. Everything's going. I had to use like 11 Ugga Duggas to get it through. So I've never had a pin that was that tight before. But either way, we're functioning and the bolt assembly is back together. For this next part, you're gonna hear some voiceover Reassembling the trigger assembly was very difficult and I had to delete a ton of video or this would be three hours long. Now we're going to start the reassembly of our trigger assembly. And uh, this is probably the most nerve wracking part for me. <clears throat> In my research I found there is one special tool that is needed for reassembly. However, I also found some people that said, oh, you could do it without it. So we're going to try and do it without it. All right. So uh, that special tool is for installing the sear spring, this little fella right here. So what we're going to do is put in this pin, put in our sear, which is right here. And 
This part alone took me probably 45 minutes to get this little piece. <laughs> Got it. You can see now my sear right there is working. Okay, so let's get to the next part here. So a lot of the time while I was trying to reassemble this, I was reviewing what I had recorded previously uh, and trying to kind of identify how a spring went on to a specific part or uh, how, which pin went into which hole or the orientation of, of, of a specific part. Um, and I used that repeatedly uh, throughout the process of trying to reassemble uh, the the trigger assembly Putting together this trigger assembly you really needed three or four hands um, You can't really do it in a vise just because the whole time you're trying to do it uh, You're flipping it around looking one way the other whatever so um, it's just that there's a lot of complicated parts that all work together. Uh, the particular pin that I'm working on right now has two springs that have to go on it, and one of the springs has two different spots that the pin has to go through. Um, and then getting that spring oriented correctly is, is kind of a pain, so it's, it's just a very tedious process. Um, I think I have a better understanding of it now. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a challenge. I think besides the sear pin, this next part with the trigger, the connector, the disconnector, and the trigger spring, which all kind of have to go in at one time, uh, that was, um, probably one of the more frustrating uh, moments you're, you're pushing against springs springs are kind of popping out here popping out there um, it's just it's very difficult to kind of get each part uh, of it together the disconnector has to connect to the sear then that has to line up with a pin the trigger spring has you know nothing holding it in until it's in its little pocket and then you have the connector on the back that piece that looks kind of like a uh, goal post or what um, and you can see here, um, I didn't realize while I was putting it together, but at one point in time, I'd accidentally turned the connector around backwards, which will catch up to too late in the game. The last part of putting this together, um, after you put the pin in there, that's the hammer pin that you put in with the hammer. And then the next part that you put in there um, is, is three pieces all together. And, um, you know, it took me a second to kind of figure out exactly the easiest way to do this. Um, once I did figure it out, that basically you put in the bar, and once that's in, then you drop in the plunger and the spring. Um, it's not too bad. The biggest thing is that you have to compress the plunger while you're pushing the pin across. I was kind of surprised there's not a plate across the backside of the spring. Uh, the spring just pushes directly against the pin. It's funny watching this now because I remember how excited I was to have it all back together. That was an adventure. I think we are back to having a functional trigger assembly. A little touch and go there for a while, but feel like everything, nope. I put it in slow-mo. You can watch my finger rub it and just see the disappointment. I'm pretty sure the slope is supposed to go to the rear. Oh, let me verify. Let's see, so the slide goes towards the rear. Yes, it is.
<laughs> Poor baby. Well, at this point, there was nothing to do but to do it and to take it back apart. Um, I had a better understanding of it at this point, so I was a little less afraid. Uh, however, you know, I tried to take apart just one little bit to get back to it. I ended up having to take out the hammer pin as well as the hammer. Um, so about 50% of the way back. Uh, the two big, most difficult uh, pins, which were the sear pin and the pin that kind of holds all of the action parts together. Um, I didn't have to take those apart, so it made it a lot easier. Just frustrating. Frustrating redoing your work. Man, for whatever reason, I, I don't know what it was, but it felt like the connector, disconnector, trigger, and trigger spring were just so much more difficult to put in the second time. Uh, once I got them in, you know, no big deal, but but man, it was it was a pain to get them back in the second time. We are done again. The slope is the correct way this time. We have a functional trigger group. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on here. We're ready to bring the whole firearm back together. I tell you, Mossberg's design for the cartridge stop and cartridge interrupter is so frustrating when you're trying to put it back together because it's like they, they're just, they're held in by sheer willpower when you're trying to put this thing back together. And, uh, you know, every time I go to put the trigger uh, assembly back in, it was just like they'd, they'd tip out just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it's really typical with Mossberg's. We have completed the reassembly of the Mossberg 590 shockwave. Thank goodness. This was an experience taking one down to that level. Um, we're gonna do a quick functions check. So what we'll do is check our action. Okay. So we're locking and unlocking. We can see that our lifter is going up and down like it's supposed to. All right, we're gonna close it with it on safe, pull the trigger. Nothing is happening, put it on fire. Okay, with it still held, listen for the reset. It reset, put it back on safe, still won't lock. Fire. This is completely done. Fully functioning Mossberg 590 shockwave. Detailed strip and functions check complete.